What's up, everybody? This is your boy Chainsaw. Boy, the hits just keep on coming this week, I'm telling you. Vaccine mandates hit the Ozarks. Arkansas tries to pass a ban on disclosure of vaccine status. Uh, Fox News anchor in tears calling for an end to all abortions. Governor Mikey P doesn't understand how the internet works. That and so much more. We've got a lot to unpack, so let's just jump right into it. Um, Leonardo DRS, uh, formerly... DRS Technologies, Inc. It's a U.S.-based defense contractor. Um, they were founded in 1968 as Diagnostic Retrieval Systems, right? Um, it was founded by uh, Leonard Newman and David Gross, uh, the former Laurel Corporation employees. Now, this company was founded uh, to pursue research on anti-submarine warfare technology, right? Um, after they left Laurel, uh, these are the folks who developed the uh, ANSQR-17 passive submarine detection system that's still used uh, by modern naval forces even today. Now, the company went public in 1981. So by 2004, they reached peak sales of $1 billion. Obviously, they were later picked up by Italian aerospace defense and security company, uh, uh, Fin Mechanica, now Leonardo, so hence the name, right? Well, this I found just the other day um, while searching some of the uh, local social media posts, right? Uh, just came across my desk, literally. I know that's a thing that people like to say, but this actually came across my desk the other day. Um, it was posted by a user of a video of themselves. So we'll just jump right into that. So. Um, the post reads, and again, this is on a, a local uh, uh, forum here, uh, made a quick video instead of typing it out to update everyone on the Leonardo DRS vaccine mandate. Basically, the office called us in yesterday on the 7th to tell us the last day we have to comply is November 24th with vaccine mandate or face the consequences on December 8th. And they did say medical religious exemptions would be allowed but they didn't seem eager for us to get them and really tried to shy us away from religious exemptions, even though we live in the Bible Belt. Unquestionably. Um, that's not the quote. Um, other than Biden verbally mandating vaccines, can it even be found in the federal registry or on paper anywhere? Question mark. OSHA has yet to put anything out about it. Uh, that I've seen uh, what I've seen working at DRS the last few years is that they are more concerned with politics than the actual work we do even telling welders in a hundred plus degree weather in hot welding shop to put masks on we're trying to plant that sounds like something to speak with OSHA about anyway um, we're trying to plan a peaceful demonstration protest coming this Friday the 15th so tomorrow right uh, maybe on the side, uh, maybe on the sidewalk by the lights in front of Walmart, but we'll keep you updated. So, looks like we've got a protest on our hands coming up tomorrow um, in, in I assume, uh, West Plains, Missouri, uh, out there in, in front of the Walmart. Now, uh, you know, as to whether or not, uh, apparently this was actually sent into other uh, media outlets uh, in the area, local media, but... Uh, you know, haven't seen anything myself. Maybe someone reported on it. So uh, if not, I guess uh, you're, you heard it here first, folks. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's take a look at this uh, this content here. Um, this is the uh, vaccine mandate. Uh, Leonard DRS tells hundreds of employees to get vaccinated or lose jobs uh, October 21st. Hey, guys, it's Thursday here, October 7th, West Plains, Missouri. Just wanted to do an update video for you on the Leonardo DRS forced vaccine mandate scenario we have going on here. So they officially gave us our uh, our talk today about the vaccine. So they came out and said it's uh it's not DRS's uh, directive. It's the government's. Has nothing to do with us. Um, you know we talked to our lawyers and legally we really tried to go back to you guys and. Uh, it's just a government policy issue, and we have to follow it, so. Well, we talked to our lawyers, and they said, don't break the law, and we said, no, okay, sounds good. Um, you have till November 24th to 
Your last option, November 24th, will be to get the J&J one-shot vaccine. And if not, December 8th, they will uh, bring us back around to talk about our options. And I asked, does that mean we're getting fired? And they wouldn't say get fired, but then they, they just kept saying, well, well, we'll talk about it December 8th. So um, I asked about medical or religious exemptions. <clears throat> they kept saying medical accommodation exemptions are the golden ticket. <laughs> that would be your best bet. And I asked about religious religious exemptions, and uh, they really tried to shy away from those. I said, ooh, those are going to be really difficult. You know, in this town, it'd be really weird if 200 people came in with uh, religious exemptions. We just don't think that would fly at all. That'd be really weird. I said, we live in the Bible Belt in a conservative town in West Plains, Missouri. Wouldn't it be more weird to fire people for not getting a vaccine that they're not sure of than it would be for people to get religious exemptions in a town where 99% of people go to church? But uh, they still should. Wouldn't it be more weird if 99% of people in West Plains, Missouri went to church? Uh, wouldn't it be more weird if folks wanted to, you know, get vaccinated because they have no substantial evidence whatsoever that they're at a greater risk from the vaccination than they are from COVID-19, specifically when it comes to uh, affecting other people in the community? Um, you know... Where's the sense? Where's the sense of patriotism in in folks looking to basically mislead th their employers by falsifying documents that will essentially be passed? I mean, these are defense contractors. You know, we're not talking about the the local bowling alley here. These are def this is a company that is a defense contractor company. These are people who work on on machinery that is of of national you know defense significance. They don't need to be falsifying documents for this stuff. I mean, take take the baby time nursing music out of the equation. We are talking about some really dangerous and scary stuff here. Shied away so they didn't like the idea. So I asked about unemployment. If we got fired for not taking a vaccine, would we get employment, the unemployment benefits? And uh, they said that. It's not up to them, it's up to the unemployment office. The unemployment office would send them something to fill out and they would have to say that work was available for us. So, indirectly, would that mean we would not get unemployment? Probably so. But, um... Yes, um, if you are terminated or lose your position of work and you are found at fault, you do not qualify for unemployment. That That's not even a question. But it seems like some of us will be trying for either the medical or religious exemptions. And some of us feel like we don't even need to mess with them. So, uh, I do know Friday the 15th of October this next month, we're trying to put together a peaceful protest. Maybe somewhere around Walmart at the lights. But we've contacted KY3, we've contacted the Daily Quill, K Country 95, Ozark Media Radio. Uh, Color 10, uh, multiple other news and media, so there might be quite a few people there. So we'll keep uh, we'll keep updating you guys. So if anybody in the community wants to come out and support us, um, might not anything come of it. It might just look silly out there holding signs, but nothing's going to happen if everybody just complies and gives up their rights to their own body and does nothing. So God. Bless there we go again with giving up the rights to your own body. Look, if you can keep that stuff in your body, I guess you have a right to it, right? But the moment you go to work and start infecting other people, you are not, you're affecting their bodily autonomy. I don't know why people don't understand that. Um, it's it's just really, you know, just misleading and, and honestly, it's disgusting stuff. I mean, the only people who are still a part of this diatribe are those who either have not had a relative, you know, a friend or relative who have actually died from COVID-19, have not experienced it themselves firsthand, or are, you know, and honestly, I don't even, I don't even blame this guy. Uh, he's getting hit. I mean, I kind of do because he actually took the time to get on YouTube and start continuing uh, to perpetuate the, 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 mis the misinformation and the filth 
that's coming from the talking heads that are perpetuating and and the, the misinformation and the filth. I mean, people are misled by folks who know better. Now, I don't know if this guy knows any better. I really have no idea. It doesn't really seem like he does. You know, so maybe it's not his fault. Um, but that's cool. But when you've got folks like... Uh, you know, uh, Sean Hannity and, and Tucker Carlson and even former President Donald Trump, who's been Mike Parson, who's been vaccinated, who had COVID-19. <laughs> Sarah Walsh, are you listening? <laughs> who have relatives who have died from COVID-19 because they're unvaccinated. And then they will still, you know, have the cojones to go out there and start just lying to people. I mean, you're just lying to people at this point. If you know, you know. So they're just trying to make a buck. They're grifting. Um, like say this this guy, he might not know. I'm not gonna jump too far into it. Um, you know, he seems like a nice guy, but uh yeah, just 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 stay off YouTube, kid. Um, but anyway, you know, keep it in mind that the CDC has already found that manufacturing, and this is this is from a study that the CDC did last year, um, I believe it was between yeah, March, April, um, until September of last year. Los Angeles, you know, blue state, right? Mask mandates, um, you know, liberal authoritarianism, right? So even there in, in, in California, right? They found that manufacturing has the highest percentage of worksite outbreaks. They expected it 26.4% and can be expected to have the highest, and this is per industry, the highest outbreak associated cases at 43.5 percent so it's safe to assume that the less proactive that people in the community you know in the work site are that the work site is located in that the higher these percentages are going to be you know in places like um i don't know where we're falsifying documents when we work at a government contractor a defense contractor you know Going around lying, the variability of case reporting, you know, compliance. These things also will affect the severity of the outbreaks, but maybe not the severity of the results, because if they're not doing a good job reporting, you know, and at the end of the day, does it really matter how many cases are reported? It matters how many how many people actually get sick. Um, you know, results are one thing. Uh, proof positive is another, um, you know, and, and that's that's more effective, obviously, in in conservative communities as the as as was mentioned earlier and that's for obvious reasons listen we're gonna take a short break um we've got a lot to discuss so we'll just jump right back into it if day trading is too stressful or you just don't want to deal with the volatility of the market m1 finance has got you covered this easy to use trading platform basically lets you build your own index fund out of companies that you believe in. And if you use my link at chainsawccc.com slash M1, M1 Finance will give you a free $30 just for signing up and funding your M1 account. Get started today, chainsawccc.com slash M1. $30 is waiting for you, bro. So last Thursday, the Arkansas Senate passed a bill prohibiting businesses from requiring employees to disclose whether or not they've been vaccinated against COVID-19. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, this is an ill-fated attempt and seemingly illegal attempt to block President Joe Biden's executive order. Um, how do you do that? How do you even do that? Didn't we settle this kind of uh, diatribe over 100 years ago in this country? Um, the bill would put businesses across the state at risk of forcing them to choose between federal fines or lawsuits from employees for not complying with state law. Now, this is an even tougher situation for healthcare facilities, which I assume no one in the Senate thought of, or at least two thirds of the Senate um, just seemed to neglect to consider uh, when passing this legislation, um, because this would force those in the healthcare industry to choose between losing federal funding for Medicaid or also being sued uh, for non-compliance to state law. Um, Republican Senator Bob Ballinger said after the bill passed the Senate, there's no bigger issue that my constituents face than this. No bigger issue. Wow. Not, uh, 
not unemployment, not, uh, you know, crime, not health care, not COVID-19 itself, no bigger issue. Um, but in a 22 to 11 vote, so a two thirds uh, vote, So in a 22 to 11 vote, two thirds vote, the bill swept through the state Senate and died in the Republican led state house. Uh, AP article, uh, Arkansas house rejects ban on employee vaccine disclosures, right? Uh, it really doesn't get any weirder than this. Where, where is that? Um, uh, this is from uh, House Speaker Matthew Shepard uh, told members before the vote, uh, uh, Republican-led uh, House of, uh, uh, of Representatives in Arkansas, uh, one overreach by the state does not eliminate the overreach by the federal government, and this is an overreach. Governor Asa Hutchinson is quoted as saying, it was a bad bill, and the House wisely killed it. Now, if you recall... Um, he did everything he could to renege on um, the, the, the passage of, of legislation that allowed for uh, mask, uh, basically to ban mask mandates or, or ban uh, mask uh, policy um, for, for businesses and schools uh, there in Arkansas right before the Delta um, surge and then found out that was a horrible idea when it was killing the people of Arkansas at an alarming rate. Um, Quickly, quickly uh, went back on that uh, hard work there in the state. It really says something about leaders, legislators, governors, you know, folks in power who draft and pass legislation that's already illegal before it even makes pen to paper. You know, if you or I commit a crime, either with malice or inadvertently, the law holds true. So should we as a society consider some sort of deterrent to legislators who draft and sign their name to laws that violate the law? Ultimately, encouraging criminal or illicit behavior? I mean, should there be some sort of fines or even go as far as jail time uh, for those in public office publicly engaging in conspiracy to encourage others to subvert the law as it's currently written. Folks who pass legislation at the state level that's unconstitutional at the state level, at the federal level, that goes against federal code already. Because um, keep in mind, they took your tax dollars to take the time to do this. So, something to think about. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. We'll take a quick break, jump right back into it. Webull is the stock app and trading platform that everybody's using, and I mean everybody's using. You've seen it all over YouTube. I use it on my own channel to show what's happening in the market. You pay zero commission fees. You can own fractional shares. You can even trade in cryptocurrencies and access real-time market data. Use my referral link, chainsawccc.com slash Webull. That's chainsawccc.com slash Webull. Weeble, W-E-B-U-L-L, -L, and get you two free stocks. Simply by opening an account and depositing any amount, get you two free stocks from Weeble. Believe me, you're going to want this one. Now, there have been some sweeping changes to anti-abortion legislation up in states across the country. And to be quite honest, I was looking to stay out of the conversation. I mean, firstly, all of my reproductive organs are on the outside of my body, just in case anyone was confused or wanted to know about that. Um, also, we're probably a good 10 to 15 years and several surgeries before I would even be able to consider the possibility of carrying a child myself. So, really something that I feel like I should have to weigh on too much or, or that is even my place to, to speak about uh, so much, right? But um, then I caught this in my feed the other day, so I figured I would share it with the class. This is uh, Fox News primetime host uh, Ben Dominich uh, giving his uh, two cents on, on uh, abortion legislation, right? So let's just jump right into that. We have, as a nation, one of the most radical abortion regimes in the world. It might surprise you to know this. 
You certainly won't hear it from anyone on any other network. But that supposedly extreme Mississippi law headed for the Supreme Court, which would block most abortions after 15 weeks, would be right at home in Europe when all those nations the left wants to emulate in other areas of policy like France and Sweden ban abortion. And so let's take a look at that. Um, 27 European countries elect uh, limit elective abortion to 12 weeks gestation. So Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan? All right. Um, Belarus, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Uh, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, France, Georgia, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Montenegro, Moldova, Northern Ireland, um, you know, because we won't be mentioning the United Kingdom in this one, um, North Macedonia, Macedonia, uh, Norway, Russia, Slovakia, Switzerland, and the Ukraine, uh, for those only catching this in the audio. Um, are the 27 European countries who limit elective abortion uh, to 12 weeks gestation. And again, Ben is making the reference that our abortion laws are just so egregious and extreme, and yet um, these countries pretty much have it right at 12 weeks uh, gestation, right? So let's continue for just a second. In fact, all the countries you see on your screen ban elective abortion at 12 weeks. None of them have what America effectively has in many states, abortion up to the point of birth. For that, you have to look at our moral equals in nations like China or North Korea. So let's take a look at that um, as far as moral equals. Well, well, in France, they allow abortion up to 12 weeks after conception. So 14 weeks after menstrual period. So depending on how you calculate um, how pregnant a person is or how far along in the pregnancy they are. Um, they will allow abortion in later periods if, the, if a physician certifies that there's physical or mental health risk to the patient's uh, risk of, of, of life or, or otherwise. Or even if the child may suffer from an array of incurable illnesses. Now, in Northern Ireland, it's a similar story, at risk of physical or mental health, or if any of the existing children are also at risk. Hmm. And they'll allow that up to 24 weeks. 24 weeks. Sounds very Roe v. Wade to me, but I'm just saying. Um, in Switzerland, it's, it's legal at any time with medical indications that the patient may suffer severe physical or psychological damage at any time. Uh, any time. In Azerbaijan, uh, the number of children exceeds five. They allow abortion um, past that past that time period, also, and so on and so forth. I mean, need I continue? Um, in Mississippi, the, which is also different from the, the the majority of the countries that were listed, there is no exemption to things like rape and incest, none whatsoever, and that is something that we've seen echoed in a lot of this new legislation. Uh, here in the United States, is that just no regard for cases involving rape or incest. So let's let's continue. Um, still, uh, Ben Dominich. Uh, still, you know this is misleading at best. I mean, how do you even call that? Is this is this just bad journalism? I mean, you 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 be the judge. But uh, let's continue. Much of the discussion around abortion is about the law. And of course, we'll talk about that tonight. But there's another law I want you to consider as you listen, and that is the law written on your hearts. Back in 1933, long before Roe, Whitaker Chambers was working as a Soviet agent when his wife found out she was pregnant. Despite the initial joy, they both knew that as communist agents, such things were not possible. His wife went to see a doctor to make arrangements. When she came back, she was quiet and noncommittal. But it slowly dawned on Chambers she wanted to keep the child. He asked her. As he writes in his autobiography, Witness, my wife came over to me, took my hands, and burst into tears. Dear heart, she said in a pleading voice, we couldn't do that awful thing to a little baby. Not to a little baby, dear heart. A wild joy swept me. Reason, the agony of my family, the Communist Party and its theories, the wars and revolutions of the 20th century crumbled at the touch of the child. What we are discussing tonight is the most fundamental question for us. 
whether the unborn lives that take root here in America are unique persons with the right to draw breath and blossom. So, bad journalism followed by alligator tears and a horrible, uh, honestly, a horrifying uh, comparison between authoritarian Soviet Union and the opposition to authoritarian, uh, well, essentially, uh, essentially fascism, uh, specifically uh, targeted toward women. Um, but, you know, hey, don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. I'm all my reproductive organs are on the outside. Um, let's 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 hear from a lady. Actually, let's hear from a lady speaking on behalf of several other ladies. So this is what's happening on the other channel. Dispatches from the Federal Appeals Court in Texas today. Quote, an abortion provider in Houston cried with her first patient after Texas's abortion ban passed. The patient had detectable embryonic cardiac activity on the day of her scheduled procedure after having none the day before. So she was unable to get an abortion. A provider in Houston recalls a patient with five children, two of whom have disabilities, who had embryonic cardiac activity at just five weeks, four days pregnant. The patient frantically pleaded, what am I going to do? What is going to happen now? One provider had a patient who says she, quote, put oils in her vagina to try to terminate her pregnancy and worries the abortion ban will force more people into, quote, back alley ways. So, you know, again, uh, don't take my word for it. You know, you you decide you be the judge. Right. Um, if that's not disturb disturbing enough for you, give it a second. One provider in Houston spoke of a 12-year-old patient who came in with her mother, a single working mother with other children. The mother said they could not travel out of state. They had barely made it to the Texas Health Center. The 12-year-old said, Mom, it was an accident. Why are they making me keep it? She's 12. Now that, Ben Dominich, is the difference between the Mississippi ban, the Texas ban, and all of these other places that you mentioned. Because in all of those countries, or, or at least, you know, the, the, the ones, I don't know about Azerbaijan. I didn't look too far into, you know, what they do when they don't allow, okay? It was getting a little bit weird after, you know, if you have five children, then you can have abortions if you want to. Because you already have five children, and I guess that's just economic stress on the state. I have no idea. It just, it's, but like, if you really can't understand the difference between the legislation that's being passed in third world United States and the legislation that's being passed in Europe and elsewhere. Um, and you want to compare that to North Korea and you want to compare that to authoritarianism from the Soviet Union, you know, in its, in the day, like look no for look no further bro i i don't know i don't know what you folks would expect one patient suffers from a chronic disease for which she has been unable to get medication for 8 months she fears the stress of the pregnancy quote would probably kill me she was relieved to secure an out of state abortion but was worried that because of the law in texas quote they'd be waiting to drag me off to jail when i got here because i'm from texas so that's the difference. Um, if you had a hard time understanding it before, let me help you out with this. In Texas and in Mississippi, well, in Texas specifically, um, there is no exemptions for health risk to the patient, whether their life is in grave danger or not. If she dies, she dies. That sounds very, you know, I, I, what was that, Rocky, Rocky 5? No, Rocky 5, no, it was Rocky 4. You know, if she dies, she dies, right? Um, so since we're making reference to the Soviet Union, um, it is what it is. You know, they're forcing a 12-year-old to give birth. I mean, if that just doesn't disgust you anyway, all of, you know, again, you know, not all of, but like, you know, the, the, the countries that Ben Dominich is vacationing in, and friends, they have exemptions with regard to things like the health of the patient, the health of the mother. 
And they also have exemptions for things like rape and incest, which in the United States, we don't believe in that kind of diatribe, I guess. You know, that's just too, uh, that's too extreme. That's too much like North Korea, you know. Um, every life counts unless, until they're born and they need food and they need, uh, you know, health care and they need, uh, you know, after that, you know, they're on their own, right? Um, I don't get it. I don't want to. Um, but again, all of my reproductive organs are on the outside of my body. Um, it's going to be a little while before this is even something that I would need to consider, um, you know, for my own self um, and my bodily autonomy. Um, you know, you decide. Let, let me know in the comments uh, what, what you think about that. If day trading is too stressful or you just don't want to deal with the volatility of the market, M1 Finance has got you covered. This easy to use trading platform basically lets you build your own index fund out of companies that you believe in. And if you use my link at chainsawccc.com slash M1, M1 Finance will give you a free $30 just for signing up and funding your M1 account. Get started today, chainsawccc.com slash M1. $30 is waiting for you, bro. Members of the Missouri State Government have been making headline news in recent weeks and for some of the strangest reasons right some of the wackiest reasons now this same holds the same thing holds true in the previous few days um and we're going to cover in this segment just some of the the most bizarre wackiest disgusting and self-serving reasons why and we're going to start with uh, you know as to why some of some of uh, your favorites are in the know we're, we'll start with attorney general eric schmidt um he posted on his twitter feed meanwhile they're going after parents showing up at school board meetings. Hashtag CRT, hashtag no mask mandates. Now, we've already covered um, in a previous show about, and we've talked and discussed about CRT and its implementation or lack thereof in the state of Missouri. Uh, we've discussed how re representatives at the state level have been going after uh, schools in the southwest of Missouri, um, demanding and honestly costing taxpayers uh, you know thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, just to review their education materials their 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 records um, and to have those of course uh, redacted to be able to send to the representative using sunshine laws um, just to check and see if maybe uh, CRT was being taught unbeknownst uh, to the racists in Jefferson City but you know, despite all that, we also went over how some of the local nut cases uh, in the south, in the southern part of Missouri, um, one in particular, the outlaw Josie Wales, who made false accusations and claims based on garbage evidence that critical race theory was being taught to nine year uh, to children as early as young as nine years old in local schools in the very center of southern Missouri, right? So, you know, these whack jobs are just not going to stop. But this is this is really just reference material. You know, we'll, we'll hold on to this for just a second. Um, it really becomes more critical uh, when we look at some of the uh, later tweets uh, by Eric Schmidt. Um, this one, for instance, uh, Eric Schmidt posted on October 11th, 2021. Now, keeping in mind that uh, Pre uh, President Joe Biden had just declared his executive order. We're changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day um, for reasons that, you know, if you don't know, Google it. I don't know. You know, your Google's not broken. Um, take a look yourself. But, uh, you know, just 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 in just as a way of knocking the president and to show their opposition to uh, to his position or his declaration, I guess. Um, Attorney General Eric Schmidt posted on uh, tweeted in 1492, the consensus among scientists was that the Earth was flat. Christopher Columbus challenged that notion and changed the world forever. Hashtag happy Columbus Day. Boy, you know, I don't know about CRT, but uh, this guy definitely could, could use a lesson in any kind of, uh, you know, history class, uh, you know, probably, probably, probably geared more toward 11-year-olds. Um, I don't know where this guy went to school at, but they obviously failed him. And, you know, don't take my word for it. I'm just some guy, you don't even know if I'm wearing pants, right? Uh, don't take my word for it. 
I caught this uh, a little bit later here. Let's uh, let's take a look. So this is from a KSDK uh, five on your side. Yes, it's an NBC production. Um, verify Christopher Columbus tweet from Missouri AG revives debunked flat Earth myth. Hmm. Hmm. So let's uh, you know they they made it easy for us. Let's take a look here. Columbus Day was observed on Monday, and Missouri's Attorney General tweeted about the Explorer, and it caused a bit of an online outcry for a fact check. Let's verify. Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt, who is running for U.S. Senate, made this argument on Twitter. In 1492, the consensus among scientists was that the Earth was flat. Christopher Columbus challenged that notion and changed the world forever. It's been shared more than a thousand times. Let's verify. Did the scientists of Columbus's time believe the Earth was flat? And did Columbus set sail to prove them wrong? Our sources, Jeffrey Burton Russell's 1991 book, Inventing the Flat Earth. Burton Russell is an American historian and religious studies scholar with a PhD from Emory University. And Christopher Columbus himself. Russell wrote that many astronomers, scholars, and map makers in Columbus's time were talking about reaching the Indies over the ocean to the west even using calculations by second century mathematician Ptolemy to estimate how far it would be. Russell added that Columbus himself never wrote that he wanted to prove the Earth was round. He wrote in a letter that he wanted to find a westward path, principally to reopen trade routes that had been blockaded in the east and south. Spanish councils at the time debated whether the return trip would be more challenging because of the curvature of the Earth, and suggested based on Ptolemy's calculations that it would just be too far to be practical. Historians today suspect Columbus misled the king and queen of Spain with underestimates of the distance in order to get funding. His projection for the trip was about 20% its actual length, wrote Russell. So we can verify, the scientists of Columbus's time did not believe that the earth was flat and Columbus did not set sail to prove them wrong. What can I verify for you? Reach out. So I think what we just verified is that Attorney General Eric Schmidt probably needs to go back to school um you know it, it only gets more ridiculous from there but uh you know i guess one could make the argument that ptolemy made his, his calculations using geometry which uh you know is part and parcel to you know an, an, old, an older system of algebra that was created by the babylonians but that of course uh, originated in the middle east and because they're brown people that's you know nothing that he would be too concerned with um you look uh it is what it is and these these people you know their google's not broken either they, they just their brains are broken i guess and speaking of folks whose uh brains are broken this this really could only lead us to to one place um and that's back to to associated press so let's just jump right in for more nonsense from the king Missouri governor slams paper for uncovering data security flaw. What? What? Okay, let's see. We've got to take a look at this. So Republican governor Mikey Parson on Thursday condemned one of Missouri's largest newspapers for exposing a flaw in a state database that allowed public access to thousands of teachers' social security numbers. Good thing someone figured that out. Um, you know, maybe if the state government wasn't still using, uh, you know, when, um, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, you know, um, Windows, what is it, Windows Explorer, Microsoft, or yeah, Windows Explorer. I mean, you know, they'd at least update to Edge or something. I mean, it's 2021, but, um, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due there, uh, Mikey P. Even though the paper held off reporting, about the flaw until after the state could fix it well that was awful nice of them i guess they really didn't have to they could have just came out and been like hey um you folks are screwing up and uh we're gonna expose it right i mean that's 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 like going the extra step that's going the extra mile right um so we saw earlier that uh, was discussed on that fox news segment where <laughs> their, their, their reporters didn't even care to continue researching the countries that they referenced and their policies before just making a complete 
uh, straw man arguments about the law in the United States, the law in Mississippi, the law, you know, in general, and use those same straw man arguments to, to argue their position regarding abortion. So in this case, we're actually going above and beyond uh, journalistic integrity, because I'm just going to tell you, if I, if I catch you with your pants down, you know, watch it. But, uh, yeah, so Parson uh, told reporters outside his Capitol office that the Missouri State Highway Patrol's Digital Forensic Unit will be conducting an investigation of all those involved and that his administration had spoken to the prosecutor in Cole County, which includes the state capital, Jefferson City. Now, when he says that they're looking into... Uh, all those involved, he means his people, right? That allowed the leak to take place, I assume, maybe. Um, that would make sense, right? He didn't elaborate as to what he meant by involved, or whether investigators would be looking into whether the St. Louis Dispatch broke the law during the course of its reporting on the data vulnerability. I guess the Constitution's, uh, you know, uh, it's... A, it's, it's Pick, pick, we just pick and choose what parts of it we want to follow. Freedom of the press, you forget about it. Um, the Post-Dispatch broke the news about the security flaw on Wednesday. The newspaper said it discovered the vulnerability in a web application that allowed the public to search teacher certifications and credentials. The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education removed the pages from its website on Tuesday after being told about the issue by the Post-Dispatch which said it gave the state time to fix the problem before they published the story. So essentially by them taking that extra step in their journalistic integrity, they, you know, basically they protected the, 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 the staff better than, better than the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, you know, I'm just saying. The Post-Dispatch estimated that more than 100,000 Social Security numbers were vulnerable, based on pay records and other data. It found that the school workers' Social Security numbers were in the HTML source code of the pages involved, because you idiots did not update your system in the last 20 years. Are you kidding me right now? The state is unaware of any misuse of individual information or even whether information was assessed inappropriately outside of this isolated incident. The DESE said in a news release, well, you know, they're journalists, they're not terrorists. Though the Post-Dispatch alerted the agency to the problem and held off on the story, the agency's news release called the person who discovered the vulnerability a hacker an appropriate an, an apparent reference to the reporter who took the records of at least three educators the agency had, it didn't elaborate as to what it meant by took the records and it declined to discuss the issue further than what it said in the news release when reached by associated press source codes are accessible by right clicking on public web pages wow wow so that's 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 insane that it was just that simple and for how long and wow. The newspaper's president and publisher, Ian Queso, uh, said in a statement that the Post-Dispatch stands by the story and the reporter who said, uh, who he said did everything right. It's regrettable that the governor has chosen to defect blame on the journalists who uncovered the website's problem and brought it to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's attention. Uh, Queso said, Parson also suggested that the reporter somehow broke the law. This individual is not a victim, Parson told reporters. They were acting against a state agency to compromise teachers' personal information in an attempt to embarrass the state and sell headlines for their news outlet. We will not let this crime against Missouri teachers go unpunished, and I think you've been doing a great job embarrassing the state of Missouri since you were elected into office. I'm just saying, and they're doing a good job, uh, you know, even before that, uh, uh, you know, in the, in, the pre in the previous term here, but, um, you know. Peter Swire, a cyber law expert and professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology School of Cybersecurity and Privacy, said 
flagging security vulnerabilities on publicly accessible websites is a public service and is clearly not criminal under federal law. Right-clicking does not count as criminal hacking. Bruh. Swire said. Uh, that's not a quote. That's uh, paraphrasing. Um, Joseph Martineau, an attorney for the Post-Dispatch, said in a statement uh, that the reporter did the responsible thing by reporting his fi findings to the ESE so that the state could act to prevent disclosure and misuse. A hacker is someone who subverts computer security with malicious or criminal intent. Here, there was no breach of any firewall or security and certainly mal no malicious intent because obviously they didn't have anything in place to prevent anyone. And, you know, the really scary part about this is all of those people that Attorney General Eric Schmidt was talking about who were, you know, just just fine, upstanding people coming to coming to these school board meetings. Those are the QAnon whack jobs who were at the Capitol on January 6th and their supporters and the rest of their cult were coming to these uh, school board meetings and disrupted. They had access to all of this information for however long. And Governor Mikey P wants to blame journalists. Come on, and do your job, and you probably won't have these kinds of problems. I don't know, you know. This guy's just trying to save face. It, it's, it's just disgusting. Um, clearly, um, let's see. For the DESE to reflect to deflect its failures by referring to this as hacking is unfounded, Martineau said. Uh, Jean Manneke, an attorney for the Missouri Press Association, said she doubted any judge would allow this to proceed very far. Um, well, don't be surprised in Missouri, because it's, uh, it's very much a thing. They've so far let uh, Governor Mike Parson commit all sorts of uh, acts that are otherwise against Missouri state law, federal law. Um, clearly, the Post-Dispatch warned of the issue of the state of this issue. Uh, Manneke said there's no evidence of any criminal or malicious in intent in the act there's no attempt to steal information there's no basis for him parson to say that there's any kind of illegal act from the post dispatch byron clemens a, a spokesman for aft st louis local 420 uh, said the teachers union isn't aware of any educators information being misused but we are concerned over the attempt to deflect responsibility and politicize what is very obviously a security breach by the state clemens said in a statement Meanwhile, Parsons said the state will address security issues raised by the newspaper's reporting. We're working, we're working to strengthen our security to prevent this incident from happening again, Parsons said. The state is owning its part, and we're addressing areas in which we need to do better than we have done before. Um, owning its part? I mean, it's 100% the state's fault. It's 100% your fault, actually. Um, you're the governor. You're the one that's these departments uh, you know look to for for executive action um you're the you're the de facto you know ceo of the state of missouri um do your freaking job bro i mean this is this is just crazy that that he would try and deflect this onto the journalists who provided this information to him and i mean that's that's a good way to put it that's a public service they didn't have to let him know they didn't have to do anything Someone came across it, you know, likely, uh, you know, he was either the, 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 the reporter themselves or, or possibly a parent, hell, maybe even an educator who came across this, across this you know, tipped off the, 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 the journalists there, the reporters there. I mean, there's no telling how they came across even finding this. The governor should find himself very lucky that this wasn't a bigger scandal when you know, without uh, unbeknownst to to the states and, uh, and unbeknownst to to these departments, all of this information was compromised, and we had an actual hack that actually hurt these people. That uh, Governor Mikey P is just not trying to help. There's a lot to look at right there. Weeble is the stock app and trading platform that everybody's using, and I mean everybody's using. You've seen it all over YouTube. I use it on my own channel to show what's happening in the market. You pay zero commission fees. You can own fractional shares. You can even trade in cryptocurrencies and access real-time market data. Use my referral link, chainsawccc.com slash Weeble. That's chainsawccc.com slash Weeble. Weeble, W-E-B-U-L-L, -L, and get you two free stocks. Simply by opening an account and depositing any amount, 
get you two free stocks from Weeple. Believe me, you're going to want this one. So for the appropriate icing on the cake, if you will, we'll take a look at some social media comments. <clears throat> uh, making reference to the uh, Leonardo D DRS situation in West Plains and uh, vaccine mandates in general. Uh, Rachel writes, Sorry, but I would... I wouldn't count on the media reporting on it, um, and this is uh, also a reference to the uh, the social media uh, video that we uh, showed a clip of earlier in this broadcast. Uh, she says, sorry, I wouldn't count on the media reporting on it. Uh, they're not fond of people that stand up for their rights. More power to y'all. I hope something comes of it. Well, hey. I'm not Steve Grant or anything, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been duly noted. So, and, you know, standing up for your rights is, is one thing. Um, fortunately, this just isn't one of those things. Um, next, let's take a look at Mariah. Mariah says, good luck. We were forced at mercy and a majority of employees fought it and never won. We lost many, many great employees due to the vaccine mandate, or due to the mandate. Uh, they weren't eligible for unemployment. Very few got religious exemptions, and they were told they had to test weekly alongside, alongside wearing an N95 mask all day. It sucks for sure. Look, if you're working in a hospital during a pandemic and you're not wearing some kind of a mask anyway, um, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me, first of all. You're working in a hospital during a pandemic and you're not vaccinated, and you're not wearing a mask, what the hell are you doing? Like, you probably, these folks probably should be working, you know, at the bowling alley. Um, you know, because I'm sure there's one that's hiring uh, near you. That's just kind of the most insane thing I think I've come across all day, and we've we've uncovered quite a bit of insanity. Um, that That's... It really just doesn't get any more weird and, and, and horrifying than that. Can you imagine, first of all, can you imagine police officers refusing, refusing to wear, you know, the, the what is it, the, 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 the Kevlar vest that they wear, uh, the uh, body armor that, that is mandatory in every single police precinct across the United States um, since 9-11? Since can, can you imagine, please, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. No, no, I, I spent my whole life, um, I've been on the, I've been on the police force for 25 years, and I am not going to carry a gun or drive a car or wear shoes. And you don't have the right by the Constitution to force me, and... I should, you know, at some point you've got to like the sanity has to has to just jump in. Um, preventative measures. If if you're not there to prevent infection, and and say to say to say to alleviate the problem, uh, you know, alleviate the purpose of your industry. Like, why do you even have a job? If that's not what you're there for, um, again, you can go work at the bowling alley. I'm just saying, uh, you can't work at McDonald's because they have more than 100 employees and they require uh, vaccines too. Or you can test weekly. I guess there's always that, but apparently that's a problem too, right? Um, these folks should be thankful they've been able to keep a job this long. I don't understand how they're able to to even pay the electric bill. Whether they have the moving on. Stephanie writes, walk out. Then where would they be? I'm not taking something that could kill me, no matter the job, pay, and all the BS. Well, the good news is no one in the United States, no one in the United States, no one in the United States has died from COVID-19, despite the plethora of ridiculous information uh, that's that's being just disseminated by morons and liars and uh, grifters and and scammers. 
No one in the United States has died from COVID-19, period. That's a fact. I mean, it could happen. It totally could happen. There are like, you know, over 300 million people in the United States. There's a lot of folks here. And it's very possible that someone might take the vaccine one day and die. But it hasn't happened yet. Chances are looking good. So, rest assured. Chris writes... The mRNA vaccines don't change DNA or manipulate existing mRNA. Smoking alters your DNA. Sunburns alter your DNA. The MR mRNA vaccines don't enter the nucleus and don't interact with DNA or the, I assume he means cellular, um, he or she means cellular, uh, machinery that splices, splits, and transcribes mRNA and DNA. Eventually, mRNA vaccines are going to be used to treat cancer and other diseases. Uh, this is analogous to Fleming discovering penicillin. But if you have a moral quandary about mRNA vaccines, vaccinus, uh, assume that's vaccines, uh, the J&J &J vaccine is a conventional vaccine that doesn't use mRNA technology. So... Got choices, folks. Um, Rebma. Rebma. Rebma says, watch this a hit hole of a town. Whoa. Watch this a hit hole of a town fall on its face. The city is far from supporting the locals. Their only focus is how much they can make. Yikes. Uh, Kelly says, I mean, there would be no overturning of vaccine mandates because we've had vaccine mandates for decades and decades. All y'all participated in it for decades and decades. It's an established law. There's no wiping that off the books. Everyone got their kids vaccinated for school, uh, got them their shots. That's what that is. And as much as I know, people are going to be tempted to try that religious exemption thing. I'm just going to tell you right now, from what I've heard, you're not going to want to go that route because your company is not going to want to take the risk on you making trouble for them. So you can try it, but I guarantee you uh, they're going to find another reason to fire you. Well, uh, we are a red state, and that does include uh, at-will employment, so not wrong. Ellie, definitely not wrong there. Um... And which party is responsible for making this a possibility? You know, uh, we'll leave it to you. So Trent writes, um, there's a United States subcontractor. It's more than Lil Key, assuming that's likely. Um, wrong then, but that's cool. Um, it's more than likely that if everyone didn't get it or whatnot, they would cease to get contracts, which I'm pretty sure the owners over across the pond would not appreciate. It's really a pretty tough spot to be in. Well, sure, and they're they're uh, a, a subcontractor. They're 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 contracted the United States. Um, you know, they, there's only so many countries who are, are going to be able to even afford um, the products that they sell, right? And the United States, well, we're, we're the world's biggest when it comes to the old war machines. So, uh, yeah, you're you're basically putting your cash cow to pasture over a, uh, you know over some misinformed people and some whack jobs. Some folks who are misinformed by other whack jobs, you know, um, it's a thing. But then again, why would you want to risk your job over not getting a vaccine? I mean, it's been a year. It's tried and tried and tested. Uh, no one's died from it. Um, in fact, there you're more likely to get complications um, to your health in general from I mean, this this is this isn't this isn't hard math, people. Um, the risk to your life and limb is going to come from coronavirus itself, from COVID nineteen itself, more significantly more than it is from the vaccine. Now, if you have a health condition that prevents you, well, then you have a health condition that prevents you. If you're just lying because you're a jackass or for political grandstanding and posturing, well, then you don't deserve to have a job. I mean, that's just that. Just plain and simple. If you're willing to lie to your employer um, over something that's that important, like people who actually have 
medical issues and aren't able to get the vaccine, if you're willing to put them, lie to your employer to put them at risk to potentially die because you're a moron, that you kind of don't deserve to have a job at that point. And that's why this was put in place, because there are apparently a lot of people who fall into that category. Um, it's been a year. It's actually perfectly fine, it, you know, to call it, to call it what it is, call a spade a spade. Um, we saw that, right? Yeah. So moving on to Matthew. Um, oh, and this is, uh, I believe at Matthew where we're making the transition to, uh, the, the proceeding segment on, uh, Arkansas and their, uh, ban of employers asking employees about their vaccine status. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, Matthew writes, their love of big government telling private business how to operate is showing again. You know, one could make the argument that the federal government is a big government, but then again, if the state government is also encroaching on the rights of, the, the, you don't get to make an argument. You just get to pick a side and be a hypocrite. Um, Cindy writes, a slippery, a slippery slope. It'll get stopped. Private business allowed to have the rules they want. Well, not necessarily. Um, if the state of Arkansas prevents employers from being able to ask employees about, that's, that's not actually businesses having the rules they want. That's the state demanding that businesses operate the way that the state wants them to. That's, you know... In, in the previous uh, comments, that's uh, that's big government. That's really, really big government. Just grandstanding uh, for the view, uh, anti-vaxxers. Oh, I, I misunderstood. She's actually for um, the uh, the elimination of the ban. Slippery slope. It'll get stopped. Oh, the legislation will get stopped. Well, it did. Good news. Um, private business allowed to have the rules they want, and you know, uh, within reason, at least at the state level regarding this matter, they do just grand standing for the few anti-vaxxers. So apologies, Cindy. <laughs> when you're dealing with all the rest of this garbage, it's uh, easy to, to, you know, to make a mistake here and there uh, with it. So my apologies. Uh, Lonnie writes from the article to get vaccinated or tested weekly. Don't want the vaccine. You have an option. It is simple and only takes a couple of minutes, so I have to wonder why all the fuss. Again, it's nothing more than political grandstanding by jackasses and people who are just spreading misinformation. I mean, that's all it is. They're willing to risk the lives of, you know, not themselves, because obviously that doesn't matter. Um, they'll say that, and that's the reason that they don't want to get the vaccine, but again... It's they're willing to risk the lives of others because of their political position, and that's just disgusting and horrifying. Um, and with Alyssa, we get to our last segment on uh, Governor Mikey P. Um, and his battle against uh, the digital underworld of, of, of constitutionally protected journalism. Um, Alyssa writes, what a waste of money. Parsons' feelings are hurt, so he's wasting tax dollars for revenge. He got caught with his pants down, and to be honest, as I said before, they did everything they could to uh, make that as paint-by-numbers as possible, and uh, somehow Governor Mikey P. can't be thankful. Uh, John writes, The Post-Dispatch acted ethically uh, by informing Missouri authorities an actual black hat hacker would have sold the data on the dark web. Now that we know Missouri's IT security is weak, I suppose it's too much to expect that these IT experts have contracted for dark web surveillance to monitor whether this data is being auctioned off to criminals. It might be worth it to do some penetration testing as well. Well, John, um, that that would be the that would be a smart move. Um, you know, upping upping our game since you know that we have a problem and since we just had a problem, um, that that'd be too much like right, I think, for Governor Mikey P. So uh, you know, he, he's more into attacking journalists. I mean, basically that's that's what the fearless leader would do, right? I don't see really any difference in his actions. Uh, Trent writes, so if I call nine one one and report the bank. I left the door open. Will the bank have me arrested for burglary? 
Oh, that's so real. And will it cost $50 million to close the door? Partisan is insulting voters with this ranting. Ah, could not agree more. Um, that's real, though. You should consider it a, a blessing in disguise. Um, as was mentioned in the article, a public service. That's a perfect way to put it. Um, Connor writes, uh, lastly, what level-headed and informed people we have here in the Ozarks, and I think that pretty well sums up the theme of today's show, right? So, let's... Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, you can visit my website, uh, chainsawccc.com. Uh, you can feel free to uh, take a gander at uh, my YouTube channel. It's located at chainsawccc.com slash YouTube. Um, if you're interested, I do have uh, referral links uh, for such and such as two free stocks with Weeble. That'll be linked down below in uh, the, the comments of my YouTube channel. Um, also, uh, free deals with uh, uh, M1 Finance to get you some extra cash there if that's something that may interest you and yeah appreciate you sticking around folks we'll see you in the next one